<laughs> Come a long way round. <laughs> oh, I never cease to amaze myself. <laughs> Good morning. How are you doing? Where are you all? Hmm? Oh, there you be, Linda Bassetto. Thank you very much, Lee. Pressing that button. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Hey, Eileen and Lynn. Linda, thank you, thank you. Just getting myself sorted. Oh dear, had a bit of a panic. Morning, Lindsay. Ben had a bit of a panic because I couldn't find my phone. I put it down and I didn't know where it was. I didn't. So, hey ho, got Pete the gardener here today. So he's doing front grass of. Uh, he's doing all church grass, which is which is lovely, isn't it? Really nice. So, good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Thank you for pressing your button. It's all good. Oh, and good morning as well to, if you're there yet, Michael Shelton, all the way from Australia. How lovely to hear from you. And thank you so much for your lovely, encouraging message. It was lovely to hear from you. And please do keep in touch and keep watching and because it really is lovely thank you morning Lynn Faulkner good to see you good to see you oh well what kind of day is this then it's a bit now how isn't it it is I've got my coffee just here yes it's in a big fat cup this morning getting a bit low on cups It's like a, a, it's like a bowl, really. It's like a soup bowl as opposed to a cup. But hey ho, there you go. It's wet and it's warm. Good morning, Julie Dennis. Good to see you, my lovely. What's the weather like, Julie Mabel Thorpe? Please, I'm missing that beach terribly. <laughs> My hair's all over the place. I've washed it this morning. It's got, it's got a life of its own this morning. That's the life of its own. So it's good to see you all. Keep pressing your buttons. Oh, I think that's Barbara Gordon coming up. Yes, there she is. Morning, Barbara. Oh, is it raining? It can't, don't, can't make its mind up here. When I got up, it was raining. And then it stopped while I walked the dog. But I have a funny feeling it's going to be around for a good long while. Yes. It's going to be make it, not making its mind up. It's not bad enough that he can't do the church gardens. So, and a fine job he makes of it too. He does. Thank you for that, Pete. And of course, thank you to the Pete before that. Pete Nightingale, who did the grass as well as. So, yay. Oh, well, it's good for the gardens. It's good for me pansies, isn't it? It's good for me pansies. So... So we seem to get an awful lot of views. There's you lovely lot who keep commenting and talking to each other, which is absolutely great. Good morning, Barbara. She's saying hi to everyone. It's just great, isn't it, that we can meet in this way. So that's really very good. Good morning, Bethan. I hope you're well. I hope you're well. Lovely photograph there of the two of you. Very nice indeed. So good morning. Good morning. So we do get an awful lot of views. I don't know whether you go back and have a look at St Paul's. <laughs> oh, very nice. Good morning, Bob. All right. I don't know whether you go and have a have a look at the page, but we have an awful lot of views. And as I've already said, we had a lovely message from Michael Shelton in Australia on Sunday. Good morning, Georgina. So it's uh, it's really lovely. So as well as all the comments that we have on here, we do get um, an awful lot of uh, watchers, So, which is great, isn't it? Even the other side of the world, I think, geographically speaking. Hmm. I'm sure you guys, some of you guys would know Michael Shelton, wouldn't you? Yeah, it was lovely to see him, uh, to, to hear from him. It was, wasn't it? Lovely. I'm just kissing Reese because he's off to work. They've had a bit of trouble with the car this morning. So, for those of you who are watching and not commenting, 
my name's Wendy Murphy. I'm your friendly neighbourhood vicar. I'm here on Wednesdays at 11, and so I'm here now, and I'm also here on Sundays at the same time. We also have a pre-recorded service um, that goes out at 10, and that gets a good lot of views as well. So I'm here today, um, your friendly neighbourhood vicar. I'm full-time at St Paul's, which is at the bottom of Colton Hill. Uh, if facing Tesco's, I don't think we have to say where we are anymore because we do such sterling work together that um, it, everybody knows where we are. So, yeah. So, anyway, how's your week going? My, excuse me, mine's not been going. Um, it's not been going is probably the honest answer, really. I had a, quite a busy day on Monday and then yesterday I felt really really tired to the point where I got up I did the dog I did a bit of tidying and then <laughs> back to bed well I didn't go back to bed but I went back to sleep I thought I think the only thing that will stop me feeling so tired is to go back to sleep which I did in the morning good morning Alison good to see you so I went back to sleep and then in the afternoon when I'd had my lunch I went back to sleep again <laughs> because uh, I wasn't I didn't go back to bed I was on the sofa with the blanket. Yes, I know it was sunny and warm yesterday, but I was on the blank on the sofa with a blanket and I was drifting in and out of sleep. So because it does make you tired, doesn't it? This situation, don't you think? I want to get going again. Both in my family life and in my church life. And I know that you all feel the same as well. And, and it just, it's really frustrating, isn't it? And you want to do all these things and yet you can't because circumstances won't allow you to do all these things. But we can't help our feelings, can we? We just have to find a way of responding appropriately to the feelings, don't we? And we have to be sensible about stuff. You know, that all that for the greater good and the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So some of us are trying and... As you can all see, some of us are not. So, what about those days, though, when we're watching and waiting and some days we're sleeping and we have a blanket and it's all good? I think Jesus is absolutely cool with all of that. He doesn't want us to work ourselves into the ground. It's a hard lesson to learn, mind, isn't it? So he doesn't want us to work ourselves into the ground, does he? He wants us to play our part, yes, but not to the point of exhaustion. Even Jesus took some time out, and I know that you all know that. So he knew that when the going got tough, when he was too exhausted, because it tells us that in the Bible, doesn't it? Even though he was the son of God, he still had to go and take time out. God, his father, sent him down from heaven. So in effect, I like this. I heard it years ago. I think it might have been a J. John. I quite like J. John and his little comments to help us make sense of things. God sent his son, Jesus. And then that meant that God was down here. So Jesus is God with skin on. And so of course, if he's got skin on, then, in effect, he is human, isn't he? He's also divine, because he's the son of God. So he's also divine. So he he's human and divine. So he's earthly and heavenly as well, I think, uh, is the best way to put it. So he could experience all that we experience in our humanness. So all those human feelings. So when he was exhausted, he found a quiet spot. Not sure he'd have found a sofa to lay on or a blanket, but that could be so, couldn't it? Figuratively speaking, because Barbara's saying that she went for a walk around the block for the first time in months. And I'm sure you felt absolutely much better, <laughs> didn't you, Barbara, when you'd done that? Because we do, don't we? Because we feel like we're doing something morning June Brown good to see you so um yeah we need to remember that Jesus too was human and if we're followers 
of Jesus, if we claim to be followers of Jesus, then if I'm telling you all that I have Jesus in my life and try to be the best I can be, then surely I will want to use Jesus, won't I, as my role model. Because role models are really important, aren't they? I'm sure you can think of a fair few in your life. You'll know that after Jesus, of course, my granddad was mine. Because he was lovely. He was. Morning, our Eileen. How you doing along with our June? Mm. So, if then Jesus had to find a way to take some time out, then surely we must do the same, mustn't we? We should, shouldn't we? So we must get over, or maybe I should say, I could be impersonal, um, that I should get over knowing that when it's time to take that moment to get on the sofa or to go for a walk, whichever is suitable. And yesterday it was suitable to stay on the sofa and keep falling to sleep. And we just have to get over those feelings of guilt. That's perfectly acceptable. Jesus didn't have any feelings of guilt, did he? When he was going off up the mountain, when he was going in the boat, he just wanted some peace and quiet. He knew how important it was to take that moment to refresh and restore himself. And he knew if he didn't do that, if we don't take time out, we burn out, don't we? And that's no good for anybody, least of all ourselves. Sometimes we follow the wrong role model. We can get caught up with people who think that they have our best interests at heart and they sometimes bluff us into thinking that they do. But actually, in the main, I would say, people are only thinking about themselves and what they can get out of us or out of our situation and we're misled. Now, not you, lovely law, I'm not talking about any of you at all but I did have an experience a good long while ago and we get caught up in people's thinking we wander off because you remember that Jesus said he was the way the truth and the life that's why that path is a narrow path to keep us on it so that when we step to the side then we're off it and we need to get back on it again. That's why it's called the narrow way. So we need to keep ourselves in check. And sometimes people come along and they want to lead us up a yellow brick road, don't they? They want to lead us up a road that doesn't even exist. And so for a bit, speaking personally, we allow them to take us up that yellow brick road. And what happens is... They lead us on, good phrase, isn't it? They lead us on up the yellow brick road. And I don't know about you, but when that's happened to me, I feel like I'm trying to sustain a sponge. You know, so you do one thing for um, someone. You do, you do it, you do that thing that you think will make them better. And actually... It doesn't make them better because you have to go on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And before you know where you are, it's a... And they're sucking all the life out of you, aren't they? Because they're never satisfied. We can't satisfy them. It's up to them and God. We have to have a look at that relationship, don't we? They have to have a look. Oh, June, that's very deep for this morning. Do you ever truly know yourself? Well, I think it's a lifetime's journey, June, to be fair. I, I really do. I think that we we are the best that we can be today and hopefully we'll be the best that we can be tomorrow and it will be a gradual 
journey. So I think if if you, I think we can truly know who we are and who we are in Jesus as well. So we can't ever satisfy these people who lead us up yellow brick roads because you can be sure that Jesus won't lead us up that road. He'll keep us on that narrow path, that narrow way. And it doesn't matter what we do for those people on that yellow brick road. Sometimes I say to people now, you will need help with that person because they are very heavy. And I don't mean that they're big and massive in weight, but they have a lot of baggage. We too, me too, have a lot of baggage. I'm not exempt. I just take it to the one who can help me to sort what's in the suitcase out. And hopefully, as June, we learn about ourselves and we learn more about Jesus. Then we can we can unpick it just gently because that's what Jesus does. He just picks unpicks everything, takes things out. Well, let's have a look at this, Wendy. Oh, no, no, Jesus, I don't want to have a look at that yet. Let's put that back in the suitcase because that feels really heavy. But eventually we have to look at what's in our suitcase, don't we? Because that's how we grow. That's how we know what our triggers are and how not we can avoid them, but we can we can accept those triggers and respond appropriately to them. Got any feedback? I'm happy to hear it. So, of course, we'll never satisfy those people. All we'll ever do is be left wanting, and they will be left wanting because their God hole needs to be filled. Then Jesus whole needs Jesus. And while ever we can tell people and show people and we can hold their hands, that's, that's absolutely great. But we remember that we are not Jesus. We are not the healers. Jesus is the healer. And so we point the way to him. We might say, I'm not sure I can help you. But I know a man who can. You remember Peter, one of the disciples, one of Jesus' disciples, telling folk around him he was, come and see the man who knows everything about me. Jesus even knew that Peter was going to betray him even once. He wasn't going to say he didn't know him once. He was going to say it, say it three times and yet... Jesus still loved Peter totally, utterly and completely. No conditions, just love. And that's what we need to be telling people. Come and see a man who made a real difference in my life, who knows everything there is to know about me. Everything. He will help us to know and accept our true selves because he wants us to be whole like we for our children and our extended family with children in uh, even if we're godmothers godfathers I'm not sure we've got any gentlemen this morning but even if you're a god parent you know you still have that best interest don't you for that child that's what you've promised to do bring them up in the christian way following that path of jesus the way the truth and the life so we say to people don't we come and see a man who has made a real difference in my life who knows everything there is to know about me and still loves me Wow, that's just about mind-blowing, isn't it? Knowing that Jesus knows about us, me included, the good, the bad and the ugly. He still loves us. He doesn't say to us 
if you do this, I will do that. There are no conditions to his love. We point to Jesus. Too often we look to human kindness for our answers. And although that has its place, of course, we all need to be kind, don't we? That's what people are saying to us. And we need to be kind. Of course we do. But what Jesus wants to do is take us in any condition. Glad, sad, bad and mad. He loves us just the way we are. I love this. This is what I heard years ago as well. So Jesus loves us just the way we are. He just loves us too much to let us stay that way. So that's that knowing yourself and making that journey with him. We want the best for those we care for, don't we? So how much more does Jesus want for each one of us with offering us his unconditional love? So to the mad Glad, sad, bad and mad, which I love, because um, we're all those things at any one time, aren't we? And we know Jesus wants the best for us. I want to add to that, that Jesus wants to know us even when we're tired. Even when we're very tired. He still wants to be there because we need to recognise when we need to take time out. So June, that's about knowing yourself, isn't it? And knowing when you've reached the end of your tether and you need to take to the sofa or a walk or find a blanket, cover your head over, whatever works for you. So we do need to recognise when we need to take time out and that isn't always my finest point, I know. And I know that you know that about me too. But I hope it's one, a point that I'm getting better at. I hope, because hope springs eternal. Jesus is teaching me new things all the time. How do I know this? Because I am in a relationship with him. And it's an up close and personal one. There is an intimacy of closeness that only a one-to-one -one thing will bring. The lines of communication are open and although I am often surprised by what Jesus tells me or indeed where he leads me, I know that Jesus has my best interests at heart. You see, Jesus had that same relationship with his dad. Up close and personal. The intimacy of I and the father are one. That up close and personal. Lines of communication always open. And I've realised this. A couple of just a couple of weeks ago, we although we look to all those people that surround us because we all want to be liked, we all want to pat on the back, myself included. I'm not, I'm I'm not saying no to that either because you know we we all need that, but actually we should only be concerned with an audience of one, and you know who that is, don't you? Of course, it's Jesus, because that's all he was concerned with. Doing his father's pleasure, doing his father's work. And if he's our role model. Well, there you go. So the Bible tells us, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know that promise is for each and every one of us. He waits patiently and he can be in that place that we retreat to. So it can be on the sofa, it can be under our blanket, 
It can be in a walk by the river or it can just be staring out in the beautiful gardens that I see on Facebook. You can just be sitting there and staring out, waiting for him there. I wonder if you know where to find him. I wonder if you know yourself enough to know where your resting place is best. Walking, sitting, lying, praying. Jesus drew aside all the time to pray to his heavenly father. You might want to think about that today. think it's still wise to still stay home, still stay safe and still stay well. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and all those you love and care for and cannot see at this moment maybe a few more now but there's still those isn't there that we can't go to the Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace and we ask for this blessing in the name of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit Amen good to see you Pat Sprout we're staying on or at least I am because I've got a full cup of coffee so talked about being tired today Pat and having a one-to-one -one with our Heavenly Father. Do stay around. Oh, this is a really big fat cup. I'm here for a little while yet. Still clouded over out there. Thank you, Eileen. Bless you too. Now you've got it all going on. I shall see you later, I think, Eileen, won't I? See you as in Zoom, see you. Along with Pat. Good morning, Avril. Morning, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you, Pat, for the blessing. It does roll on. I, I've noticed that when I press finish, it does roll on itself. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. I hope I do give you a little bit to think about because that's definitely my intention when I come on, you know, just to give you a little nudge and think, oh, have I been thinking about that lately? So, yeah. Oh. Thank you, Linda. God bless you too, too, Linda and Lee. You're very welcome, June. It's good to see you on here. You've got two two magazines winging your way now because the next ones are done courtesy of Linda Bichetto. So, um, yes, I'll put them both in an envelope and they will be with you forthwith this week. I'll make sure that you get them. I promise. I promise, promise, promise. So you'll have to have some good reading because they're very different. Very different indeed. Oh, bless you. 
Bless you, Pat. She's been out with a mask on. You can't see with it on. I know it's going to bring an awful lot of um, stuff along, isn't it? Good morning, Lorraine. We're just, well, we're not just about done. We're just at coffee. So um, you'll pick me up as um, as we go along. Our good friend, isn't it, Lorraine? Liz Tetley, she's a birthday girl today. She is, for those of you not on Facebook. So we've wished her a very happy birthday. Bless. Anybody got anything planned for later? Not much of a day to plan anything. I think it might be another, mind you, it's not another soap day for me. I've got things to do today. I've got three more things to do today. That's what happens when you have a day on the sofa, but that's all right. That's not a problem. Oh, Lynn's asking, Pat, how are you wearing your mask? Which are the best ones? I must confess, I haven't, I haven't actually um, worn one yet. I can see I'm going to have to. So, which are the best ones? I quite like the look of those black ones. You know, with the little filter that you can wash and wash and wash. They look quite comfy, don't they? Good morning, Lorraine. Good to see you. They they look quite good, I think. I guess when you wear glasses, though, all the time, if you're wearing... What do you think, Lynn? If you're wearing them over your mouth and your, and your nose, I guess, what about the condensation from your glasses? Does that happen? No, I wondered if somebody would comment on this, uh, Barbara Gordon. This, this was a gift pack. I tried very hard, let me tell you, not to go into Costa Coffees. I would rather have a coffee, um, take this how you will. I would rather have a coffee from McDonald's because McDonald's actually do a really nice coffee. I got, but this was in a, Barbara Gordon, this was in a Christmas pack. So it was a pack of coffee with this big fat jug thing, cup, uh, with the smaller one as well. So I wondered whether anybody, so I, I don't really do Costa, to be honest. I, I, I don't, um, I don't like it. Uh, it's far too strong and I like my coffee strong. Don't I, Pat Sprout? But. Oh, you've got to put the mask on under your glasses. <laughs> yeah, I like I like my coffee very strong. I usually, if I go to people's houses, oh, that seems forever ago, doesn't it? It's usually two scoops. And majority of the time, not always, but majority of the time, I have two scoops black, no sugar. That'll do me. Oh, well, that keeps me going. Keeps me alert. <laughs> My eyes wide open. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't drink much coffee yesterday. <laughs> Dear me. Oh, oh. you're only still. Mind you, I did get up about quarter past five this morning. It was lovely. It was. Nice to have a moment. Is it? Oh, bless you, Lynn. Two frosted lenses. That won't do, will it? Oh, I might have to have a look at that Sam Toft site. I might. I've got pictures going up the uh, stairs now. Eileen, when you come round, you'll see them. They have, because the kids keep buying, you know, it's like the shoes. You know, because they don't know what to buy me. So they buy me shoes or Sam Toft. But I'll ask for a Sam Toft mug. 
so I can bring it on to Kira and show you how wonderful she is. Wonderful. Is somebody talking? It must be Pete on his phone. Pete the gardener, that is. Not my Pete. <laughs> it's actually really not very nice either to drink out of. Those of you that know me well will also know that I don't like big, fat cups. This one really is humongous and it's really thick to drink out of but my little thin ones which were wilco's ones 199 they've stopped doing them what's that all about the little lovely well they're not little the lovely white china ones 199 and stop doing them can you not and i've been looking for some new dinner services because ours is um you know all, all our dinners because obviously we, we in the up until lockdown, we was having people here every every day, every week for some kind of meal. And so they're really tatty now because they're very old. I mean, they're probably eight, nine years old. So we went and had a look. Oh, I'm, I'm not buying them at that price. No, I'm just not. <laughs> you have a good day, day too, Eileen. Take good care of yourself and give my love to Amy. Are you cooking anything? Today? Is that why you're going on? Are you cooking? I love China, Barbara Gordon, I do. Little thin cups. That's why when we do um, food and fa not necessarily on food and fellowship, although I think we might do it then, but certainly when we do our tea on a, on life begins, that's why I I know um, you know we have to hand wash all the cups and sauces and everything, but you can't beat a bit of china. I don't think anyway. Pat's brute Pete is not ironing because he ironed you yesterday. And we're going to bring some more of my bookcases down. We've got my brother Tony coming up. And our Reese, I think, uh, will be home shortly. And so uh, we're going to bring some more bookcases down. And I'm going to sift through the books and take some to the charity shop. Because there's far too many books, even for me. All right, Lynn. See you soon. God bless. Have a good day and see you Sunday. 10 o'clock for pre-recorded and 11 o'clock me again. Your friendly neighbourhood vicar. I'm not on pre-recorded service this, this Sunday. It's the rest of the uh, amazing team that we've got at St Paul's. Bye-bye everyone. And you're going off to Lynn. God bless. God bless. Good to see you all. Thanks for pressing your button and coming on. Bab. Are you still there, Bethan? How are you? Not sure whether you haven't popped off. Oh, fading fast now. People are thinking about the tummies. I'm certainly thinking about mine. For a change. It's like I said on Sunday, isn't it? Eating's a new smoking. What will we eat now? I even had ginger biscuits yesterday. If Mike Skidmore was watching, he would smile. Because I think, he says I ate a whole packet of ginger nuts at his house once. I have to tell you, I don't think it was a whole pack. So, um, it wasn't, but it was about half a pack, to be fair. It certainly wasn't a whole pack. I'm convinced it wasn't. <laughs> Thin cups are best, aren't they, Pat Sprout? And I will see you later. Good bookcase assembly, I know. Well, they're already assembled. They're upstairs, Pat. They just need to come down. They do.
they just need to come down from there so i've got um a socially distanced visit in a moment and then i'm zooming at three o'clock because i have uh my deaf um my, my deaf church um i do a service for them a recorded service like we do on a sunday and i'm recording that today with an interpreter because i'm not that good yet that can do it by myself I'm all right on a one-to-one -one round the table but i'm i'm not so good on camera because i get myself all in a pickle so we have a interpreter for that so i'll be doing that at three and then of course I've got bible study at um 7 30 so it's a bit of a day it is And there you go. Just popping off now. Anybody got anything nice for lunch? I can feel my go-to. My go-to for lunch is cheese and red onion on brown bread. If there's a, any decent salad left, I might put that on as well. But I love cheese and red onion. All right then, my lovelies. I'll see you Sunday then. Your newsletters will be popping through the door at some point. Take good care. Stay safe. God bless you.